Hello, what's going on guys? My name is Body Underdog and welcome to a Minecraft video. Now, in today's video, I will be showing you ah, how to make this combination lock windmill powered create mod door. Sorry about the lag, I am on a Chromebook book. Um Okay, so the Reddit user the you caramel 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 Otter, Caramel Otter, I'm sorry if I, um, totally botched you, your Reddit username, asked that I do a tutorial on this door. Now, it's fairly simple to do, but, um, this is, yet again, just the introduction, I need to formulate some stuff, but the basic is, first off, you don't need in-case shafts, you can just use normal shafts, see here, um, and for here, here I, in the tutorial, I will be showing you how to build one of these modules and then expand it later. So, and yeah. So you will need eight lectins per module and eight books. So these lectins have um, books. They do need to be, they could be signed and unsigned, but as long as they have 15 pages, you can actually regulate the amount of signal that goes into them. To them, and yeah. I am going to formulate an area on how to do this, and when I'm done, I'll see you. You'll well, you're not going to see it. I'm going to have to go through this. This when you next see me in this video, what I need, the preparation that I need to be done, will have been done. All right. So, as you can see, I'm back. Um, and, yeah. Okay, time to get on with the tutorial. So, you'll need a bunch of building blocks. So this is essentially for the door. You'll need super glue, large cogwheels, and small cogwheels, and a water wheel. First off, we're going to start by creating the door, in which you need... You'll need all these materials. 69 sails. 7 glass, 1 water bucket, 16 books that have been signed by you, all written as long as they have 15 pages that have been written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it doesn't matter what's on the page, just as long as there's 15. Teen, teen, you are going to need super glue, you might need two tubes, tubes, but these tubes can be used more than once. You will need 5 dirt, these are used in like, other things, I can't exactly remember what they're used in. You'll need two hoppers, two observers, a bunch of dust, some comparators, some repeaters, tears, some co a lot of cogwheels, large cogwheels, encased shafts, all shafts, doesn't matter which. You can use andesite or brass. You can use, you'll need a clutch, a gear shift, a water wheel, speedometer and stress liner. You don't need these, but these are nice to have. Sticky mechanical piston, windmill bandle, five piston extension pulls, one mechanical bearing, a deployer, five redstone contacts, a rotation speed controller, a Nixie tube, three mechanical belts, two vertical gearboxes, boxes, a bunch of building blocks, eight redstone torches, 64 shafts, 16 lecterns, two droppers, two gearboxes, a power toggle latch, and four redstone links. Now we're going to start by building our door. Door. So we're going to take the sticky me mechanical piston and our piston extension pull. We and then we're going to grab our super glue and some of our building blocks. Okay, let's start. Okay, so to start by starting off, off if this is the level that you want your door at, you're going to want to go boom. You're going to want to break one block. Now we are building. I'm build going to be doing this above ground. So this is the bottom. So we're going to put one, two. Three, four, five blocks, and then we're gonna place down a sticky mechanical piston. Piston, we're gonna take our super glue in hand, put it in our hand, and go one, two, three, one, two, for our five blocks long, and then one, two, three, four, and just fill in the rest of our blocks. Now, this is our door. This is the door when it's shut. 
So now we're going to build up a frame around our door using whatever block you want. One, it just needs to be longer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Usually good. Now I'm gonna grow. Now at this point you can just grow. I'm just gonna grab a mechanical, a creative motor, and extend this. This now you can just grab any kind of form of motor and like, as long as it's powered, extend it up to the max. As we can see, here we go to six. Go across, and in case our door. Of course, you don't want to put anything below it, and then we can add. And then I'm going to add a floor. Now, obviously, you'd have a floor, so you'd build it out of whatever block and whatever. And what you use, you don't. You can use whatever block you want. Want whatever building block you want. Now, I just need to. Resend the door down so that's back in the default position. And then we're just going to add some more floor on this side. Right here. At this point, we'll have we'll be done with our extension pole and our mechanical piston. And this is all the th that we need our super glue for. So we're done with it, that. Now I would still recommend keeping your building block of choice on you at all times and, and now we're getting to building now we're going to build the power source or source of it now you can put this anywhere hence why there's a varying amount of cog wheels and large cog wheels and potentially might need a varying amount of belts but the design that i'm using has three mechanical belts belts and cog we wheels wheels and we'll worry about this later so now if we come over here and look at my design, design will notice, take a note that we go, that starting from this block right around here, we go one, starting from here, we go one block up and over, two blocks, three blocks tall, we will put our mechanic, our windmill bearing. So that means at, from here, we start with on our, um, <laughs> On our door frame, we go one, two, three, and then four. And then we place down all of our sails. Oops, um, I'm just going to put myself into survival mode so I use these up. One. Now we're going to start by making it into a 7x7 seven seven cube, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or you can just follow me. It doesn't really matter what shape it is, but as you can see in that design, it is a 7x7 seven seven with like some 5 on the edge. That is a small little bit of a circle on it. Now with the remaining 20, now that we've built our 7x7, seven seven, we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Eve and 1. Yep. 2, 3, 4, 5. And now we have a sail. Our wind... Ah! Sorry about the lag, guys. Um... And now we have our windmill, so we can now get rid of our mechanical bearing. Wait, that's a my... I just grabbed a mechanical bearing. <laughs> I just put down a mechanical bearing, not a windmill bearing. <sighs> that, 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 that's, that's embarrassing. In, in my defense, their item texture looks remarkably similar. I'm keeping that in. I can't believe that it took me that long to realize. Anyways, here is our bearing, and as you can see, when we push it, shit, it starts and stops. 
stops. Now we're actually going to put our cog wheels away as we're now going to put, we're going to grab this and then we're going to grab our encased shafts or shafts. It depends on what you do. If any of you know how to craft an encased shaft, good for you. Make an encased shaft. It'll make your build look a lot cleaner and a lot nicer. And of course, grab your building blocks. You should always keep these in your inventory of choice, and you should keep these in your inventory. Now, as you can see, see, we've got this. You stand out by the, like this and this. So I'm just taking a look at my original here, coming over, and then we're going to fly back. I know I really should have prepared for this a lot better, better, but, you know, so you put your launch cog wheel here. Whoops. <laughs> yeah, and then you take your small cog wheel, place it here, and then you'll take your encased shafts. Wait, did I really? Oh yeah, I did it too. Because, of course, if you do, you can move this one block extra over if you don't want to be seeing the spinning gears. I like to see spinning gears. as It's a nice little indication that you've actually solved it. Granted, if you do want the security, you wouldn't do that, but that's just me. Well, this is just me. I'm going to put a large cog wheel. I believe a large cog wheel. Um, let me go see for a second. So after that, insert, you take your shaft, and then you take two shafts, so you will need encased shaft and shafts, and then you stick two encased shafts outwards. So at this point, we're mostly done with our shafts, but we will do this. So here's our two encased shafts. Now I am going to need to actually fill in this wall for a second here. Um, I'm going to come back after I've done some expansion to our platform, form, and then we'll continue from there. Okay, so now we go one. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, okay, okay. Now we're back. I've gotten some measurements back from my thing. And next step is we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Or well, really, however many blocks, but I think seven is fine here. And you take your mechanical belt, which I'm going to show you this. You don't. You only need three here, but going F3, F4. Really, one weird thing with it is that... I don't think this is one for like something this long. This is the one thing that I strangely find weird. And then we're going to go and grab a mechanical bearing from my chest. And just the actual time when I actually need it. Wait. Ah, here it is. We're going to grab our mechanical bearing and our five redstone contracts, our dust, and a Nixie tube. At this point, we don't need cog wheels. Wheels, we're just dealing with shafts. And right here, we place our mechanical bearing. Ring. We'll take our redstone contact, go right here. Yeah, put some temporary blocks out, then do that. So, now when this starts spinning, spinning as it does, the redstone contacts power, causing them to light. That's light. Causing them to receive power and thus emit a redstone signal. Now, using your building blocks or world, depending on what you want to do, if you want to color your circuits or not, I would recommend coloring your circuits, but if you don't want to, you don't have to, but it's still something that I recommend doing. I mean, we're going to take our redstone signal to here, and we're going to hop on to where our, essentially our floor is. So if we pop out our thing here, we're going to see this. We're going to put our block here, place our Nixie tube at eye level, fill back in the hole we made, then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten redstone dust. 
And yes, I get we could do this simpler, but um Wait, can you actually put do the oh. Well, that that's significantly simpler. So you need one, two, three, four, five. So you need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine redstone dust here. So when this starts spinning, this will cause it to power our Nixie tube, which will give us a display of the redstone signal strength. When it's stagnant, we know that the system is off, and as it changes, because all of these are like different redstone distances away, as you can see, it's modulating between 13, 12, 13, 12, th 13, 12 in one. Now, depending on the distances that you have, you can have different numbers. This is just 13, 12, and 1, because, you know, it's only three under these numbers. That means only three of these distances actually apply. Apply 10 being the lowest strength, 13 being the highest strength. So 13 would be of, like, this one. 10 is probably this one. And then, of course, these two are possibly the same. 10 is probably this one, and then these two are probably... 12, or, or whatever. I, 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 I don't know, okay? I, I don't know! <sighs> next up, we're going to make... Anyways, so next up, we're going to go here and here. We're going to break these two blocks, these three blocks. And now I need to gra grab, and we're going to grab our... Vertical gearboxes, our speedometer, and stressometer. Technically, you only need the stressometer. You don't need this to do this section, but I would just recommend doing it yeah, just for the fun. We're going to grab a gear shift. Shift. Shift our redstone link. A powered toggle latch. And a button. I forgot to grab, and we're going to button you like two buttons. That's what this whole system hinges on. And you know what, I just realized we actually need like three observers. That is hilarious. Totally forgot about one of those um, observers. Uh, anyways, so what we're going to do is right here we're going to place down our speedometer. Right here we're going to place our stressometer. Of course you could have it the other way around. Speedometer, stressometer. I could just, I don't honestly care how you put them down. Down that order doesn't matter, as technically this step is a bonus step, you don't need to do it. Do it, but I would still recommend doing it. Here we're going to take uh, a shaft or an encased shaft, I'm going to use an encased shaft. And then we're going to place down our gearbox. Two cog wheels. A shaft. And of course, one mechanical belt from here to here. Now, mechanical belts do affect your stress. So you do need to make sure to, when you're doing something like this, to properly... Really put them in. Them in correctly. Delay. Anyways, so we have to somehow get this signal to here and make it toggleable. So, of course, we can have our gear shift here. We can actually technically have our gear shift anywhere since we're going to be using our redstone link. So for our redstone link, we're just going to do, say, a button, apply these two things, as long as they're the same to the frequency. So we're going to hit put our button here and here. So this will send this, and then you'll do the exact same thing, except shift right click it with an empty hand. But we're not technically there yet, so I'll explain it. But you will want to put this down on the sides. And yes, you will need to, I would highly recommend just clearing out a large area underneath. Underneath. And then you can take some of your encased shafts. Grab your cog wheels. Grab your own case shaft. 
grab your normal gearbox. And shift it over one space. Grab a shoot gearbox again. Place your gear shift down. Grab a gearbox. Grab one gearbox. Place your gear shift here. Grab your cog wheels. Grab a shaft. Nope. Then grab your shaft and mechanical belts. And go from here to here. Now, technically, this is a slight variation from my initial design, but yet again, this is a better routing of everything. Everything and is significantly cheaper for you, the redstone. Well, not redstone, the whatever person you are. Anyways, so you take that, your redstone link. So whatever assist frequency you set up here, which in my case is a stone button. Ah, my metal click. In frequency 1. And the power toggle latch in frequency 2. Then you shift, right click it, and set it to this. So now, when we push this button, we lock. This will work, change the direction of it, and boom. So that is the door mechanism, essentially, actually here, and done. As you can see, when the gearbox is off, the door is shut, and when the gearbox is on, the door will open. Now this is rotating at a speed of, oh, 64 rotations per minute. So it's a fairly quick open and fairly quick shut. Now, you can adjust that design by adding in, say, another speedometer or whatever. I accidentally took a screenshot. Or as you see in my case, as you can see, see, do, do, do. Okay, so as you can see with the redstone is a bit different and nowhere near optimized as I place my piston right here. Now, of course, you could shrink the distance by having the piston all the way on this side. Side, it doesn't really matter, but I'm having decided to have, with this design, a centralized location for this. And we followed the exact same design. It gave us a 64 RPM. I'm actually... Wait a minute. This is something that I need to investigate. Was it actually 64 RPM with this one? Oh, it was 64 RPM. Okay. And that's this system, but, okay, next step, at making, okay, so we're done with the mechanical belts, and at this point, we're pretty much done with a fair bit of what we have in my inventory right now. Now, what we need right now is, um, is are three observers, are two hoppers, some redstone dust, our torches, comparators, redstone stone four redstone repeaters. There's yes, we need four, or well, technically you might need more. I would recommend getting getting at least eight. Not four. This is some last minute altercations that I'm making. Eight redstone repeaters. Peters. Your last two redstone. Your last two redstone links. Links. Five blocks to go inside our hopper. Burr. Our deployer. Your. Your building blocks. Actually, you need like nine of these. Sorry. Our deployer, our lectern, our code book, our water bucket, get a clutch, and some encased or normal shafts. I'm going to use encased shafts here, and a rotation speed controller, and a large cockwheel. 
wheel. This is what we need. What's in my inventory right now is all that we need. Need You need 16 lectins, 16 team books that are numbered 1 to 15, and it's very important that each page with 15 pages numbered 1 to 15 or whatever, they can be whatever you want, like mumbo jumbo, is AFK, or whatever. Anyways, we're first going to start over here, which means I'm going to need to grab some building blocks, and our deployer. Nope. <laughs> Silly me. So first off, we're going to stick our deployer right here. Then, we're going to place our clutch here. Yeah, now one second, let me grab the seven glass. Glass and the water wheel. I forgot about these. You'll need seven glass and a water wheel as well. And I'll fly back over here. And right here, we're going to place our one large cog wheel. And then two, uh, our rotational speed controller. Now, of course, you can like that. Now, you're going to want to set this one to, what was it? I believe it was 32, but I just want to confirm that it is 32. Yes, and then you're going to want to set it to 32. Oop. Which you do by scroll by putting your cursor on it and then scrolling your mouse wheel. If you don't have a mouse, tough luck, I guess. Then you're going to take your building block, your observers, and I forgot to grab the droppers! I forgot to grab the droppers, yes! Of which you'll need two of. Why is it that I'm always forgetting, I'm forgetting something? I know this is a bit confusing to go by, and I'll probably just, just at the beginning of the episode, just, um, of this, put a material list on screen. Yeah. Or just a material list in the description. Anyways. So. For those of you who don't know how a clutch works, it actually stops a rotational force. Thus, we're just setting that up there first, as it's pretty easy to do. So you're going to want to take take one of the, place one, place a block down, a temporary block here. Then, you're going to want to place a temp, so okay, for, how do we do this? First, we place a temporary block here. Then, a temper a, a, a block here, then we'll take this torch, put it down there, destroy this temporary block, put a temporary block here, place a torch into it, a hopper into here, and then shift, right, cl left click a hopper here, and then we're going to take these five, five random items that stack to 64, four, or just five items in general, I prefer 64 stacked items, Dirt's fairly easy to come by, so you just stick those items there. Then we're just going to then we're going to do 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 place some blocks down here. Here yeah, we're going to place one dropper facing vertic We're gonna place one dropper facing vertically. And then another one. Temporary block here, temporary block here, temporary block here. This way. And of course, obviously, you're going to want to put a block down right here. Then, we take this observer, we place it here. We take our second observer, we place it here. And then we take one dust, and place it right here. Yeah, and then we take an extra item, and put it in here. So, be it like a cog wheel or something, it can be any item. I'm just going to place an extra dust in there. It could even be dirt. Next, we're going to grab our comparators, and we're going to place one comparator right here, and our other comparator right here. Here. And we're going to break this temporary block, this temporary block, and this temporary block. block. Then we're going to place a temporary, that, a temporary block. I'm going to place a block here, here. Technically, if you are building this underground, you'll essentially just have to remove blocks. And then, we're going to take our redstone link, shift, and ignore that, <laughs> shift, right click it to turn it into an antenna, then we're going to take a torch, an item, and place it as frequency 2, and take another item and place it as frequency 1. 
remember this. This is the frequency that you're going to need to, be, to use for this one. It's important, actually, that they are separate frequencies. It's a separate frequency from the one that we use for that one, because if it's a different frequency, see, it'll essentially mean, because if it uses a different frequency, then yeah. Anyways, it's not time for experimenting, Spotty. Under the, spotty, it's not time for experimenting. Anyways, okay, so next, so that's that part. Next up is the more complicated part of this. This build, and it's... Oh, wait, next up, oh, I forgot to add. Next up, we're going to build a, the water wheel, which fortunately is very easy to build. I'm just going to take this encased shaft out a bit, place three shafts or encased shafts, take a water wheel, place one block here, place a temporary block here, place a block there, there, and there, and then one here and here, place another temporary block here, and then place a block. Then break these two temporary blocks. Then you take your water block, and now, and then place a bucket of water down, and now your water wheel will be spinning, and if I were to unpower this clutch, the player would move, activate the windmill bearing, and then stop after this delay, and then if I were to, to activate it, activate this little contraption here again, it would move, stop the windmill bearing, and then retract. Retract. I, it took me a while to actually settle on this design because I needed to figure out a, cor a correct delay, but yet again, that's the Probably the more frustrating part of this. Next up is to build the actual lectern combination lock. We'll go one block here, one block here, one block here, one lectern here, one lectern here, and one lectern here. Then you want to grab your books, you're going to want to grab these and your building block. Go one, two, three, four. And then right here, we're going to do one, two, three. We're going to place a comparator and a comparator, and then dust. And then we're going to essentially replicate this everywhere else, except mirrored on the right and left. One, two, Three. I'm gonna play now. Technically, I wouldn't recommend doing this. I would actually move it back a block. That way, they can't actually see through to your comparators and then potentially guess your passwords. So you're actually gonna want to do something like this: temporary block, temporary block, or permanent block, depending on what you want to do, and then build the system. System. So, but in the end, the choice is up to you. I'm erring on the side of safety. And I'm going to do this. I know I'm literally contradicting what I said in the last few seconds. Now, it's actually important that if you want it to have a code zero, then you want to leave the, then you don't want to right click the of one, then you don't want to right click these. But if you do want it to be, when you have the default, when you have the lectins in there set to one, to one, one, don't hit, put it into subtract mode, but, for anything other than just getting a code, a base of one, you want to right click it and put it into subtract mode. But I'm going to have it be a very simple 111 for this door, for this lock, lock, and a 222 for the second lock. Lock just for the plans. And as we do it, I'm essentially going to show you how to expand it. And you know what? I just realized I built this too high. That is really embarrassing. Oh boy. I can like edit that out. Thankfully. I can I, I fortunately I can thankfully like edit that out, but yeah. Anyways, when you're done with this, with the first layer you do the exact same thing on the top. Remember it's eight comparators per module dual, so that you're going to need a total of 16 if you're going to do a two module system. 
It's very important that you need, that you get the right amount of comparators and the right amount of materials, because this will like right before, when you start, rather than after. So, yes. Very important. Now, now, the next step is to take some lecterns. Let's take our lecterns, place it on here, 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 and here. Book, 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 book. Now this will give us a code of one. So, there's that. So first off, you're going to want to place two blocks there, two torches, and a block block torch torch then you want to want to go this way place blocks like this And I'm just going to go quickly check that that was the right design. Um, just, just double checking that my design choice was correct, and yes, it was. Now, I would recommend using colored wool, wool for these circuits, but you don't have to. Okay, so next up is where our repeaters come in. As you saw, we only have one. But there is a reason why I would recommend getting more. So, as you can see, it's two per module. As you can see, one there and one there. And we go block, temporary block, and then we place that. And then we place a normal block below this one where we're going to place a redstone dust. Now, we're actually going to. Now, essentially, what you need to do is. Mirror this module one more time, one block over, and I'm going to skip ahead on this part, part to wiring up the final signal, so you'll see, so when you next see me, that's where we'll be. Alright, so now that you've built this, if you want to change, I'm going to show you how to essentially change the combination. Now, if any of these modules are going to have a number other than one, you want to hit subtract on them. And this will subtract a redstone signal, causing this to essentially light. So obviously this is going to be two 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 two, because what redstone signal strength? So the redstone signal strength emitted by the comparator is directly equivalent to that one. So when a comparator is in subtract mode, if it's subtracting a signal strength of one, then we want this to be a two. And this will turn off our redstone signal for 22222. Essentially, just allows for some finer controls and everything. And yeah, that's how you do that. Next up for the setting up of this, you just link them up with a redstone line. However, a very important part to do is to at some point during this line insert at least one. Repeat it to one, repeat the signal all the way around along for one and two, it will help. Then we're just going to go two blocks here, grab our observer, place it right here, place a repeater right here. Now it's very important that this is a repeater as observers can detect changes in redstone signal strength, which will happen as this will change from a 14 to a less than 14 unless you had to repeat it like literally right here then you wouldn't have any change but it's very important that like you make sure that there's no change it's just easy to have a repeater right here here and it will negate all comparator so here it's just easier to negate that change now we're going to grab our redstone link place it here and then as we saw earlier with our Filt with our frequencies, we want to set it to the plate 
dropper frequency knobs. Whatever frequency one, frequency two, you set it up to to now create more people. You guys can tell me whether or not this actually like sends out a signal to both. Now this one, you don't need to shift or a click. So now, so we're actually going to set this to default on, since the combination is technically solved. It is the correct combination. But, as soon as I make this the wrong combination, as you can see, that stops. The Nixie tube stays on 13, and it stops functioning. And then, when I flip it back to a correct combination, as you can see, it turns on. And now we can push this button and our door opens. Push it again and our door closes and we can now read these gauges. The gauges in of themselves in the moving gears do do it so technically you can skip the Nixie tube thing. thing. But for those of you Nixie tube engineers, I'll leave you guys to figure out how to say the door is opened and the door is closed. Closed for those of you who want to have door locked, door closed, or whatever. I'll leave you next to tube engineers, engineers and crate engineers, and thank you. Have a wonderful time, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.